we have a lot of app builders to choose from. So in today's video, I'm gonna break down why you would choose any of these. The ones we'll be discussing in today's video will be VS Code, Cursor AI, Alt New, V0, Replit, Data Button, and Windsurf. Therefore, by the end, you'll have a complete understanding when you take this journey, which is the one to start with. Let's jump in. Welcome back, y'all. Today's video might ruffle some feathers. Some people might be mad at me by the end of it. But my goal here, my purpose, is to give you brutally honest perspective from someone that's currently building out their own software company. For the last year and a half, I've been building out bumpups.com, which is currently funded by Google. So let me give you my perspective when it comes to actually building out real applications that make money, that get funding. Today's video topic comes from Henry here, who's part of my school community. And Henry went ahead and just laid out a ton of information. I was like, okay, the only real way for me to answer this question is to do a full blown video. So that's what we're doing here today. For reference, if you join my school community, which will be in the description down below, you can ask me questions like that, which I could possibly make a video on like I'm doing here, or alternatively get access to a bunch of exclusive training. Let's go ahead and jump into today's video. Based on what me and Henry were talking about on school, here are the major grading points. In no particular order, the first one will be code outputs. How good is the code that it's outputting? Then it's gonna be front-end development. Maybe some platforms are more specialized for front-end compared to some that are better for back-end. Next is deploy, which will encompass how easy is it to deploy to an actual website link, storage buckets, databases, everything like that. Following this with code team, we're going to see how easy it is for the platform to allow other developers and give more context from software engineers. And then finally, which is a big one for a lot of people is cost. How much am I realistically going to be spending a month? And realistically, if it does work out and it is at scale, how much would that cost me for a successful app? Enough talking. Let's do it. So we got Jimmy in the middle here and Jimmy's like, I don't know which one to choose. Where am I going? Each one of these platforms represents a different type of developer. So let's get started here. First off, let's do a overall generalization between the platforms. To do that, we're going to simply do this. So we're going to grab a little pencil here. Windsurf, VS Code, Cursor AI. These are what I like to call IDEs, Integrated Development Environments. I want you to think of these three as kind of like how we've been coding for a very long time. And obviously with Windsurf, Cursor, and even VS Code now, there is some artificial intelligence integration. And also to be clear, the way I'm presenting this information is under the perspective that you want to learn how to code slash really find out the platform that's best with AI and coding. Like this video is not for 2016 level where it's just like, which one do you like coding in? Because honestly, there wasn't that many options back then. This is all predicated on the fact that now we can use AI to code. So with these three though, Windsor, VS Code and Cursor AI, this is like its own category here. This is a little bit higher learning curve when building out applications, which leads us to the other four here, which I like to call AI app builders or agent-based IDEs. So when I say agent-based IDEs, I mean that the actual user interface, the way you create code and everything about the board in this manner is completely different than what we see with this. And if you've used any of these different platforms between this category or that category, you'll know exactly what I'm talking about. So now that we have the two general categories here, let's dive in. Oh, new to be clear i've done videos on all these platforms if you want to see a more in-depth video on the platform itself type in my name corbin brown old new bs code whatever it may be i'll show up you'll see a little thumbnail like <laughs> let's get going how do i see bolt new i see bolt new as nvp minimal viable products this is a front-end heavy type of agent builder here i don't suggest this for actual full stack application building now yes it literally says prompt run edit deploy full stack web apps but do, should you do that no is the code it's outputting good? I suppose so if you know how to prompt it, but should you actually use this to build out a full stack application? I'm gonna say no, and I say the only reason you would use Bolt New is that you have an idea, you drawn it on your little whiteboard, you got it in your notes, you wanna real quickly use a UI like this just to kinda see what it would look like if you put it into a web app, but once you have it there as a proof of concept, stop, don't use. That just lost me a ton of money from Bolt New sponsorships. I'm telling you the truth, no more Bolt. Therefore, consensus for Bolt, M. V, P. Let's go to V0. Hmm, I'm noticing a pattern, Corbin. Why does this look so eerily similar to Bolt New? By the way, I just said that. I think it's pretty obvious what I'm about to say here. MVP. Don't build a full stack application that's going to make you millions of dollars on V0. Does this create great front ends? Yes. Can you deploy relatively easy? I guess, but not crazy easy. Is it worth the cost associated using V0? Probably not. Therefore, same situation here. MVP. I told you this video is going to give me a lot of hate. Someone's going to come in the comments like, yo, Corbin, I built out a $20 million software product using Vizier. I don't care. I don't care. Do that. <laughs> if this is your first time watching me, I'm very sarcastic. So handle that how you want to handle that. On to Replit. When it comes to Replit, I do like Replit a lot. 
this seems like a solid platform. What you'll notice is that with a lot of these AI agent builders is that it's very front-end code heavy. So you'll be able to create really, really cool front-ends. That's also why part of the reason why when you look halfway through YouTube, no one ever makes a back-end video when using this kind of tech, except me, so check out my playlist. But when it comes to Replit, I mean, look at the name. Idea to app fast. Replit, Bolt New, V0, this is a different type of developer. This is a niche type of developer that wants to build fast to get fast outputs when it comes to software. If that is your thing and you like that, proceed. I'll say when looking at these three right here, I mean, these are pretty good heavy hitters when it comes to front end code and just getting the ball rolling and you comfortable with coding in itself. Therefore, the barrier of entry and the learning curve associated with these platforms here is not that high or it is high, but nowhere near as high as these top three. So keeping this all in mind, this feels more like I'm having a hobby. I want to have some fun. Like, let's just build out a cool little tic-tac-toe game. MVP. Now we come over to Data Button. Here's the one big thing about Data Button that sets it apart comparative to the other agent builder type of app developing. You actually can talk to a real software developer. And the way you actually deploy stuff to the back end is a lot simpler than the other three. So one of the big things I was talking to Henry about in that school community post was the idea of, okay, how do we get coding developers past me just doing it myself? How do I build out a team? Everything of that realm. But one thing I can tell you just right off the bat is comparative to the other ones or comparative to all of them, to be honest with you, this is the only one that allows you to talk directly to software engineers for software help. Saying that though, this may come off as a little too pricey for you depending on what you wanna do. You gotta be honest with yourself. If you're building out an application and you get direct access to software engineers to help you build out that application, obviously there's gonna be more additional costs associated with it. So I see the viability of data button here in building out real full stack applications. It's just gonna be a little pricey. That's kind of the double edged sword here. You wanna code easier and get over the learning curve of coding and actually build out full stack applications. It's gonna come with a price. That's just how it works. So data button's good, but just maybe a little pricey depending on your budget for your software project, which leads us to the last three right here. All right, here we go. I already know this is gonna cause some issues in the comments. Either we're gonna get diehard Cursor AI fans or Windsurf fans. There doesn't really seem to be a corner for VS Code, so like, let me see some VS Code love here. Cursor AI and Windsurf work in the sense of us having an integrated development environment and having AI integrated into that. And when I say IDE, don't worry, that literally just means like when you double click Windsurf or double click Cursor AI when that application opens up, that's an IDE. So Windsurf and Cursor AI are the same type of value proposition in the sense of having your IDE and AI integrated into it. E.g. when you open up a chat with Cascada and Windsurf or you open up a chat with Cursor AI, that's integration. But with VS Code, we could do an IDE and keep the AI separate. So we'll have those two little lines represent separation. And just to be crystal clear on my previous point, this is Windsurf. This is the AI integrated into it, which allows it to see your entire directory and code with you directly. Knowing the distinction, the type of developer that wants to do IDE plus AI is gonna be different from the type of developer that wants to do IDE separate from AI. By the end of this video, I'm gonna show you which group I'm with and personally what I do in my own workflow. But for now, Windsurf Cursor AI. If you saw my other video comparing these two, I hit it on the nose when it came to increasing pricing from Windsurf. I had like a $10 plan and in that video, I was like, hold up. There is no way they're gonna keep it at $10, but if they do, this is a great deal. Two days later, they increased the price. So now we have a little bit of a different situation here. Basically, when looking at both these plans, we're looking at $15 comparative to $20 by Cursor AI. So then the question then becomes, who do I wanna be loyal to for the near future if I plan on doing an IDE with an AI integration? So right off the bat, when it comes to code outputs between Cursor and Windsurf here, that's really just on how you prompt it. I will say though, I find Windsurf's lower tier model a lot more effective than Cursor Small from Cursor AI. When it comes to front-end deployment, it's basically the same across the board for all three. When it comes to back-end deployment, it's basically the same for all three because of the fact that in this type of environment, this is going to be more terminal heavy. Saying that when it comes to front-end development for all four of these and actually deploying the front-end, it's going to be a lot easier than it would be over here. But in reality, all it really needs for you to understand when it comes to the front-end is one simple line for at least a React-based app, which is going to be NPM start. Once you do this once and deploy to localhost 3000, that's not really the burden. The burden then becomes when dealing with the back end, which leads us to these four right here. Now, data button, what they'll do is they'll make it very simple, just you know, create a function. It will handle all the logistics when it comes to running a back end function. These are gonna require a little bit more heavy lifting from your side when it comes to creating a back end and using a specific type of back end. So we have AWS, Google Cloud, Firebase, 
everything like that. Once you connect with Firebase though, the process to deploying to the backend is the same here. Also, I do a ton of videos on this, so there's an entire front-end playlist and a back-end playlist if you wanna learn how to actually connect and create real apps. For now though, here's the situation, and here's how you choose between these three. First major thing, cost. $15 from Windsurf, $20 from Cursor AI. You're looking at marginal difference between the two platforms, so if cost is your only variable here, then opt for Windsurf. VS Code is free, but if you were to use an AI helper like ChatGBT, that would be $20 a month. Clearly, the cost associated with these top three is going to be cheaper than the cost associated with these four, but the learning curve is gonna be much higher with these three. Then when choosing between these three, if it's not cost, like cost isn't too important, but you do like these three, it really comes down to code quality and workflow. Personally, from my experience, I prefer VS Code plus ChatGBT. I prefer the method of keeping my IDE VS code separate from my AI outputs. The reason I do this and some of the responses I've been seeing from my videos is that when using something like Cursor AI or Windsurf, sometimes when you build really big applications and you ask it to change something in a file, it starts messing around too much. It starts changing stuff that you didn't ask it to change, which can be extremely frustrating, like extremely frustrating, especially with full stack applications. If that doesn't really pose an issue to you, and you don't worry about that kind of situation that much, and you like the way that you can kind of have Cascada to the right with Windsurf or you know Cursor AI's little chatbot to the side, then you know proceed with either one of these. You can watch my full depth difference between the two right up here or in the description down below. For me personally, if I had to invest the next two years to build out an application, I'm going with VS Code and I'm going with ChatGBT and I'm keeping them separate. Huge disclaimer, this path is going to have the highest learning curve. You are going to get most frustrated with this path. You're going to run into errors that are going to take hours for you to fix. You're going to run into situations where you're going to break your terminal. Like there is going to be a ton of stuff that happens here. Although if you get past that learning curve and you succeed and you build out a full stack application with this path, then congratulations. You've just learned one of the most valuable skills that currently exists on the market. And on top of that, pairing that with artificial intelligence to help you build out that skill. Using AI in any of these workflows allows you to do the work of three developers as one developer. This is the new situation. This is the new way to code. And this is not 2012 where we have to keep skimming through Stack Overflow. Maybe sometimes, maybe you have to go back to Stack Overflow here and there. For now, AI, IDE, proceed. One last thing, if you plan on maybe building out the MVP, but you don't want to code out the entire thing because you know maybe it takes too much time, therefore you are looking to hire a developer team, check out that video in the description down below. I'll see if I can link it right there as well. I show you within 20 minutes from my perspective in the industry, how to proceed in hiring a coding team that you can outsource to. Does that all sound good? I'll see you in the next video. Let's code with AI. Two random videos. That's my face. I'll see you in the next video.